Okay, so let's have a look. In this lesson or in this webinar, we will discover what it means to eat out and to eat in, learn how to be polite when you eat out in the UK, compare different kinds of service in cafes, restaurants, and at events. And of course, test your knowledge and understanding through a range of activities. Okay, so let's have a look. To eat out. So this phrase means to go and eat at a restaurant. To eat in, you can eat in inside your home, but also in a cafe. The opposite action is to take away or take out. Hmm, okay, so now we learned about those, those words, the take out or take away in a previous webinar. Okay, so interesting. So here we've got to eat out. So it means to eat at a restaurant or to eat in. You can eat inside your home, but also you can eat in in a cafe. So how to use the phrase eat out or eating out? So we can use it to make a suggestion. Shall we eat out tonight? Or to talk about future plans. I'm eating out later with Maria. Okay, so let's have a look. Now, let's have a look at this activity. This is the first activity for our webinar. And all we need to do is answer and choose which of these statements are true, okay? So the first one says, let's eat out tonight, is a suggestion. B, we're eating out later, is a future plan. And C, I wish I could eat out, is a future plan. So is it A, B, C, all of the above or none of the above? <laughs> <laughs> well done. So I'm having a look at our poll and the question is which statements are true? It's a multiple choice question. And A, of course, as Shirley mentioned, is let's eat out tonight is a suggestion. We're eating out later. Is that a future plan? We'll see, I wish I could eat out. Is that a future plan? Okay, so well done. Our polling is now closed. Let's have a look at the correct answer. Fantastic. Okay, so the two statements that are true is, let's eat out tonight is a suggestion, and we're eating out later is a future plan. Good job, everyone. Well done. Okay, so let's have a look. How to use the phrase eat or eating in. In a cafe or fast food restaurant, you will be asked, are you eating in or taking away? If you stay and sit down, you're eating in. You're eating in the restaurant, okay, or the cafe. So that is what they might ask you, is it eat in or take away? You would say, if you wish to sit down, you're eating in. Okay, now we're gonna do a fun activity to match the two halves to make complete sentences. So let's have a look at the first one. A, to eat out means, hmm, is it E, to eat inside your home or at a cafe? F, a cafe has tables outside. G, to eat at a place outside of your home. Or H, your own home. Hmm. To eat out means... Good. Yes. To oh, eat out means to eat at a place outside of your home. Good job. Let's have a look at the next one. To eat in means E, to eat inside your home or at a cafe. F, a cafe has tables outside. Or <laughs> H, <laughs> your own home. Hmm. Let's have a look at the answers. Well done. Good. So to eat in 
means to eat inside your home or at a cafe. <laughs> now let's move on to the next one, C. You can still eat in if, F, a cafe has tables outside, or H, your own home. Hmm. You can still eat in if, let's have a look at those answers. <laughs> Good, very good. So yes, you can still eat in if a cafe has tables outside. Well done. Now the last one, D. You can't eat out in, and the only option we've got with an answer is your own home. Well done, everyone. Great, great, great. Fantastic answers, well done. Okay, so let's have a look at some rules. When you eat out in the UK, it may be different to eating out in your home country. Let's look at some British customs. So British customs are British things that we do or British rules. Okay, so for example, queuing is an important custom in British culture, absolutely. In most cafes and coffee shops, people queue to order and pay for food and drinks. Okay, absolutely. I'm thinking of other places where it's respectful to queue would be in a supermarket or perhaps at an event where you have to go through some sort of um, security to get in, that would be a queue. Okay, so it is quite a popular thing to do. To sort of wait your turn. Can you guess the rules of queuing? Hmm. So what do we think? So I see some answers in the chat box and someone says you need to respect others. I totally Absolutely. agree with that. <laughs> well done. That's a great. What about what about you, Shirley? What would you think one of the rules of queuing is? So I would go along with agreeing to the comment we had in the chat box, respect one another. But also I think that goes hand in hand with giving each other personal space and not invading anyone's privacy. So Absolutely. it's better to stand at a distance than stand right up next to someone or behind someone. Absolutely, I agree. So let's take a look. If you do not want to offend people, so to hurt someone's feelings or to annoy anyone, do join the queue at the back. Okay, so if you see a queue and there's the restaurant and you see quite a long line away from the restaurant or from the counter, do join the queue at the back. We don't slot in anywhere. We don't go straight to the front. We generally queue at the back. Don't stand too close to the person in front of you. As Shirley said, we would call that invading someone's space. When you're very close to someone, you can feel the presence around you. No one really likes that. You want to give someone or everyone their space. And of course, avoid jumping the queue. This means joining the queue in the middle or even worse, at the front. <laughs> I don't think I have the confidence to jump the queue, especially at a cafe or a, or a takeaway restaurant. Everyone's hungry, everyone's maybe waiting to pay, and then, you know, you go and jump the front. I don't think I would have the confidence to stand in front of someone. Just before we move on to this activity, Emily, Absolutely. have you ever experienced someone jumping the queue in front of you? And yes. if so, what did you do? <laughs> it's a funny story and it's quite sad. So someone did, and I didn't have a, I was very polite about it. Someone had a friend that they allowed to join the queue with them. So it wasn't sort of a random person just coming up to the front. But then they only allowed 10 people in. And then I was number 11. And I thought, oh, if that person hadn't brought their friend and let them go in front of them, I would have then got in. So I was a bit, oh, I was a bit disappointed. 
But again, I didn't say anything. Although it's it's not what you do, I chose just to let it happen. And then when they allowed, okay, we're going to take the next 10 people, I was number 11. Oh. <laughs> um, but that, you know, that's just how the world works sometimes. What about you, Shirley? Have you ever experienced something similar? I have many, many times. And what I usually do is I'm not the type of person to confront others. So mm. same like you, I usually keep quiet but there was this mm. one time where a bunch or a group of people oh. actually jumped the queue right in front of me and I wasn't being unpolite or anything I well I think I had then I handled the situation in a respectful manner <laughs> mm, absolutely sometimes it can be a bit unfair especially if you've been depends how long you've been waiting for if we just all got there at the same time okay but the fact that I was there for so long and was waiting. To... I Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're going to match the phrases to the meanings. All right, so the same like we did in the previous activity. Let's have a look at the first one. To queue. Does it mean to join a queue in the middle or at the front? F, to stand too close to another person. G, to stand in a line. Or H, to make a person upset or angry. Hmm. Ah, some good answers. Yes, well done. So to Q means to stand in a line. Good job. Let's move on to B. So to offend someone, what does that mean? Does it mean E, to join a queue in the middle or at the front? F, to stand too close to another person? Or H, to make a person upset or angry? To offend someone. Hmm. Yes, very good. It means to make a person upset or angry. <laughs> Good. Let's move on to C. To jump the queue. Hmm. What does that mean? Does it mean E? To join a queue in the middle or at the front? Or F? To stand too close to another person? Hmm. To jump the queue. Good answers. Well done. <laughs> so to jump the queue means to join a queue in the middle or even worse at the front. <laughs> and the last one, to invade someone's space. <laughs> Pretty obvious. That means to stand too close to another person. Very good. And I think when someone invades someone else's space, it usually makes them upset or angry as mm. well. Absolutely. Very well, uncomfortable. Absolutely. Very interesting. So can we name two things you should not do when queuing in the UK? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so you should mm -hmm. not jump the queue or invade someone's space, as we discussed earlier. <laughs> Perfect. Absolutely. So on those lines, what are P's and Q's? OK, so we've got a little diagram there. Your P's is please. So it stands for please. And your Q's is your thank you's. <laughs> so it's just something that we use to, to form your please and your thank you's. So another UK custom is to say please and thank you when ordering food and in shops. Absolutely. I think in any situation, even at home, if you if your parents have cooked food or your your other half has cooked food, you would always say your pleases and your thank yous. So for example, can I get two lattes and a cappuccino, please? Perfect. What eating out customs do you have in your country? Hmm. 
I'd like to add to that. So I think it's very common. In fact, all around the world, please and thank yous are very yeah. <laughs> but Absolutely. also what I've noticed is in most countries around the world, queuing is also important. So that's the same as the customs in the UK. Another thing that I've noticed is that depending on which fast food restaurant you go to, they are two different queues. So you mm. would need to respect other people and join the right queue to avoid any confrontations or conflict mm. or anything that will cause a fuss absolutely that's a good point that's a really good point okay so we are halfway through our webinar so we just wanted to take a quick two minutes to let you know if you're enjoying us so far if you're enjoying the content so far for more british content remember to click subscribe we've got youtube channel facebook instagram twitter and pinterest with so much information and so much content for you to enjoy so remember if you're enjoying what you're seeing please do subscribe to our channels okay so let's have a look at some more british culture and the word or term service so it is a noun and it is work that is done for others as an occupation or business an act or work done for others especially for money so a service, if you perform a service, you generally are paid for that service. And it could be your occupation or it could be something your business provides to others. Let's have a look at types of service. There are different types of service when you eat out. For example, do you know the difference between self-service and silver service? Let's find out. There's a lot of S's there, self-service and silver service. <laughs> I would challenge everyone to, to repeat those two types of services. <laughs> okay, so first things first, self-service. You find self-service in cafes and sometimes in restaurants. For example, at a Chinese buffet. Most coffee shops have a self-service for food and a counter service for hot drinks. Interesting. Shirley, have you ever been to, or can you think of an example where you've been to a self-service sort of restaurant or cafe? Yes, definitely. So usually for special occasions, my family and I book into a self-service restaurant where it's a buffet. And like it says on the slide here, the food will be self-service and mm -hmm. then there will be a counter service for the hot drinks, such as your cappuccinos, your coffee, yes. your lattes, but the cold drinks such as your sodas or ice mm -hmm. water, anything like that would usually be in the fridge stored somewhere behind the counter. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Again, on the exact same special occasions, it'll always be a buffet. Sometimes the water and juices are included and it would just be your hot drinks that need to be made perhaps in a kitchen that would then be sort of your counter service. But absolutely, as you can see in the picture, this looks like a canteen or a cafeteria of some sort where it's possibly self-service food and maybe at the end you'll go to your counter service to pay and obviously to get your drinks, like you said, behind the behind some sort of system as I as, as I expect it would be difficult to to manage and to to look at what people are are using and taking if it was a self-service drinks counter as opposed to food where it's a buffet and you you can help yourself anyway okay so Shirley would you like to to find out what people think of this picture Okay, so what I can see from this picture is... My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> definitely counter service. It looks like the young lady is ordering a coffee or a latte, some type of hot drink. But Absolutely. it does look like she's being very polite as they are smiling. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's have a look if our viewers agree. So what type of service would this be? What is happening in this picture? 
Absolutely. Polite service. There's a waitress. Yes, absolutely. Fantastic. Counter service. Yes, great answers. So this picture shows counter service. This means you order and pay for your food or drinks over a counter. So a counter is the top, sort of the, the top ledge in a restaurant. It's the counter. Okay. So table service is very common in restaurants, as you can see from our video clip, but sometimes in cafes too. Can you think of any places where you would not have table service? Okay. Hmm. Well, I definitely think some fast food restaurants don't have uh, table service. I don't think. I have ever been, I think it's all been self-service, especially self-service comes in very important when it's when you have to self-service and you have to throw away your rubbish. So if you have eaten in at some restaurants, I know I take my tray and I put it where it needs to go. That is self-service. I make sure the table behind me is, is clear for the next people coming in, especially if I do end up eating in in a fast food restaurant, I will then you know, your self-service is not only ordering, it is also cleaning up after yourself, is also in, in the package of self-service. <laughs> in restaurants, Brits often have a three-course meal. Hmm. A starter or appetizer, something small just to start, to start the journey, the food journey. A main or entree and a dessert. Ooh. That sounds lovely, <laughs> like a three course meal, but I probably wouldn't be able to cook it at home, which is, I'm sure, why a lot of Brits go rather to a restaurant. <laughs> so let's do another poll. So let's have a look at these three pictures, one being at the top, two being the second picture, which is on your right and then the bottom picture is the third one so which picture shows a popular starter in wales picture one picture two or picture three yes that's good, good. <laughs> so i think picture one looks like soup some sort of soup so in our poll here we've got is it a is that a soup so picture one right at the top then the middle one that looks like a salad to me. So would would our Welsh our Welsh folk have salad, or is it rarebit, which is essentially cheese on toast? <laughs> and okay. it looks like picture three is the winner. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's take a look if we're correct. Let's have a look. Good. Well done. Yes. Yeah. Cheese on toast or Welsh rarebit is a popular starter in Wales. Popular starters in England include soup and salad. I can completely agree with the soup, definitely. I wouldn't choose a salad as a starter, but soup, absolutely. <laughs> so what's your favourite starter, Emily? <laughs> um, hmm... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> if the, it sounds uh, strange, but soup. So I would, uh, if there is soup of the day, I would, which is actually quite French. They call it soup du jour. So soup of the day. I would perhaps maybe go with the soup. Or my eye seems to always go to fish cakes. If I see fish cakes on a starter menu, I always think that's going to be good. <laughs> so depending what I'm having for my main, if my main is going to be meat, maybe a fishy starter or opposite the other way around. I know um, jalapeno peppers stuffed with cheese and bacon. Can't go wrong. Something spicy. <laughs> Absolutely. And you? Well, for me, it's got to be a garlicky type of starter, maybe prawn soaked in garlic sauce with a fresh slice of bread, 
or mm. definitely crumbed mushrooms. If I see crumbed mushrooms on a starter Absolutely. on a starter menu, that is my first choice. <laughs> I, I thought that in my head. Absolutely, crumbed mushroom. Oh, they 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 that is something. That and the the gelat and the peppers, the stuffed peppers. That's that's. I I do like something vegetarian when when I have my my starter. <laughs> cool. So remember this video. Can anyone describe what is happening in this video? You can, if you're in a group, you can maybe discuss it with a partner, or if you would like to chat, type your answer. What do you think is happening in this video? What kind of service is it? I'll give you just a couple more, more seconds to have a think about what type of service this is. Hmm. So there is a, uh, an answer in the chat box, Emily, and the first one that popped up is table service. <laughs> Absolutely. Well done. Well done. Fantastic. I'm sure it's because I saw someone give someone menus. It also looks like quite a fancy restaurant, the decor. It doesn't look like a self-service sort of restaurant or cafe. <laughs> well done, everyone. That's brilliant. So let's have a look at silver service. Hmm. Okay, so now perhaps that video will start linking. People receive silver service at five-star restaurants and also at events like weddings. A silver service table looks like this. Okay, so you've got a centerpiece, which would be the flowers. We've got some lovely silverware, some lovely glassware, and it looks really, really presented very, very nicely. I would say I think I'm a silver service type of person because that looks lovely. It looks like you're going to be really spoiled at that restaurant or event. <laughs> Definitely, I agree with that. I think silver service is my favorite type of service. Just the mm. special treatment, the five star treatment that you get is incredible. And usually the food is incredible too. Absolutely, absolutely. So at a silver service meal, you might have three, four or five courses. <gasps> Woo, wonderful. <laughs> For each course, you use a new knife and fork. So you go, you start from the outer in, maybe your salad, then perhaps a warm starter, then your main, then maybe sometimes I know they serve sorbet or a type of ice cream just to cleanse the palate, maybe a lime or lemon sorbet, and then your spoon would be perhaps for your dessert or for your soup. The spoon is usually used for soup starter. There we go. Oh, lovely. I think I'm getting hungry now. Maybe I should make a five course meal tonight in my home. <laughs> okay, so here we have another activity to match the two halves to make complete sentences. So let's jump in and get started. So A, self-service means getting food. Hmm. Does that mean E in a place that has table service, F in cafes and coffee shops, G for yourself from a buffet, etc., or H at events like weddings? Hmm. Self-service means getting food. Let's have a look at some answers. Yes, it means getting food for yourself from a buffet in a restaurant or any other type of self-service place. Good. The next one, B, a waiter brings your food. What type of service is that? E, in a place that has table service, F, in cafes and coffee shops, or H, at events like weddings. Yes, wonderful. So a waiter brings your food in a place that has table service. Good job. <laughs> Moving on to C, it says silver service usually happens hmm, in cafes and coffee shops or at events like weddings. <laughs> Good. 
definitely fancier events like weddings where we get served either three, four or five courses. Well done. And the last one, counter service, sorry, counter service usually happens. Hmm. <laughs> Good. Counter service usually happens in cafes and coffee shops. Well done, everyone. And thank you so much for participating. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a look at what are good manners. We have already learned about polite words like please and thank you. There are also polite actions. Together, these are good manners. Okay. Hmm. So let's complete the sentences about good manners. <laughs> so here we've got three pictures. Let's have a close look at each of these pictures. Now, hmm, let's fill in the missing words to complete these sentences. The first one, A, and that goes hand in hand with picture one. So don't, hmm, your phone at the, <laughs> hmm, what do you think? Yes, good, lovely answers. So definitely, don't use your phone at the table. <laughs> and I agree with that. I think it's very, very disrespectful, I'd say, to use your phone at the table because you are supposed to be, for example, if you on a lunch date with your friend, mm. you can have a conversation rather than just sitting on your phone. <laughs> Absolutely. Good. The next one, B. Do B. Hmm to your waitress and that is picture two hmm do be what do you think good yes so do be polite to your waitress good and in that picture we can see that that waitress does look very pleased <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on to the last one. I think this one is quite obvious from the picture. So don't pick up food with your <laughs> with your fingers. Good job. Well done, everyone. Fantastic. Okay, so there we have all the answers. Don't use your phone at the table. Good. The next one. Do be polite to your waitress. And the last one, don't pick up food with your fingers. Fantastic. Well done, everyone. I would like to elaborate on three or C, that don't pick up food with your fingers. Now, we have to remember that these three examples are very much British customs, because I know that in some countries, using your hands when you eat can be a sign of respect, or it's just the way, you know, if I'm having bread with my soup, I will probably pick it up with my hands. <laughs> so I think it would maybe that would go more towards your silver service. I don't think you would use your hands or your fingers um, within silver service, but I believe that sometimes perhaps using your fingers in certain cultures and customs is, is the norm. I think I think everything that we we discuss is based on obviously UK culture and customs. However, I know using the phone at the table quite a, a worldwide. I know I don't. Um, we have a little game that in our friendship circle, if we are all out together, the first person that picks up their phone has to pay for everyone's meal. <laughs> so everyone puts their phones far away and we have a lovely, lovely discussion and it is so nice. And of course, polite and being kind is a universal value. <laughs> okay, so actions that are bad manners. Okay, so talking with food in your mouth. Okay, so in UK culture or British culture, we see that as quite rude. It is bad manners. No one wants to see what's in your mouth. <laughs> Calling a waiter or waitress by snapping 
your fingers, definitely, or burping or belching. I'm not going to do an example during or after a meal. So burping or belching. Belching is just a very loud burp. It's rude during or after a meal, especially if you're in company or at a silver service. Oh, if you're at home and you want to have a light burp and no one is around, but if you are at a restaurant where there are people around you, especially at a silver service um, restaurant or event, no burping or belching, that is considered quite rude or bad manners. <laughs> We have got another poll for you, so let's take a look. Yes, and this one is simply true or false. Okay, so let's have a look at the question. So if you want to call a waiter, you should snap your fingers. Is this true or false? Absolutely. <laughs> so in quite quick. Sorry, Emma. Absolutely. No, I was about to say the exact same thing. We've got some wonderful votes. What I can see is the question, if you want to call a waiter, you should snap your fingers. Is that true or is it false? So let's get these votes in. Fantastic, seeing lots of votes for false, which I think is great. Well done. Fantastic. And it is, of course, <laughs> False. <laughs> so when you call a waiter, you should never snap your fingers. It's very disrespectful. And to mm -hmm. some people, they may feel very, very offended. So please absolutely. don't do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, let's move on to another activity to test your knowledge on our British culture. Okay, so this is a fill in the gap activity. So let's have a look. I love hmm, with my friends. We usually meet on Fridays after work and go to a hmm, for a. <laughs> Sometimes if I'm not very hungry, I will order a starter and a main course, but no at the end. So send me your answers in the chat box and we will have a look in a few seconds. <laughs> good some lovely answers coming in wow <laughs> all well right done. so let's have a look so i love eating out with my friends we usually meet on fridays after work and go to a restaurant for a three course meal yummy <laughs> sometimes if i'm not very hungry I will order a starter and a main course, but no dessert at the end. Lovely. Well, well for me, sorry, for me, I'm the total opposite. If I'm not very mm -hmm. hungry, I'd rather order a main course and dessert and leave yeah. out the starter. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm the same. Always something sweet. I'll always, I'll generally, otherwise I feel too full when I get my main course. I'm generally main course and dessert something sweet absolutely yeah because like you say sometimes the flavors of a starter can be very similar especially if you have soup i feel very very full after having soup as a starter and then a main a dessert would would probably not not fit <laughs> okay so now let's have a look at the did you know portion of our webinar Chinese restaurants are most popular in the city of Belfast in Northern Ireland. So in Northern Ireland, specifically in Belfast, Chinese restaurants are the most popular. That's awesome. In 2018, there were 88,848 restaurants and cafes in the UK. Wow, and if you look on the map, Let's do some homework. Let's look on the map and let's find, you know, the UK. And that's a lot of restaurants for such a small portion of the map. 88,848 active restaurants and cafes. And in 2018, 13 million people visited cafes in the morning for a cup of coffee. 
So that would be, remember something we learned in our previous webinar was maybe it was on the go. They were getting coffee on the go, which meant they were going somewhere. They were going to work, going to school, um, going to the gym, and they wanted to get a quick cup of coffee from a cafe and took a takeaway on the go. <laughs> okay, so what fun facts about food and eating out can you share? If you are watching live, do let us know in the chat box, or if you are watching a recorded version of this webinar, please do get in touch and let us know any fun facts about food and eating out that you could share with us. <laughs> what about you, Shirley? What are maybe some personal fun facts about your food or eating out that you could share? <laughs> so it's actually quite funny. In my family, what we usually do when we do plan like a family trip to go and eat out a family journey, mm -hmm. we'd actually play, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with it, but we'd play a game of heads and tails and flip a coin to have a vote on who gets to choose which restaurant oh, we wow. get to go to. <laughs> and oh, then the that's same awesome. Yeah, and then the same thing we do if we, mm. for example, do a group of starters and we all order, mm. order one thing, we do yeah. the exact same thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Clever. That's great. I would say the starter thing, absolutely. We, we would very rarely order a starter just for ourselves. We would get a couple of starters for the middle for everyone just to share and snack on and just have a little a little bite but dessert no no that's mine <laughs> there'll be no sharing of dessert <laughs> what i order i want to enjoy all to myself <laughs> but snacky um tapas or finger food for starters absolutely <laughs> well everyone it was so wonderful seeing you please do come next week for more and more fun information on British culture and customs. But in the meantime, do subscribe to our channels to learn all about British culture. We've got a YouTube channel. We've got a Facebook page. We've got Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. Do get in touch because we really want to hear what you have to say and what you think about British culture. Do let us know what your thoughts are or some topics that you would really like to hear about. It was lovely seeing you today. And from me and Shirley, we wish you goodbye and have a lovely dinner time. <laughs> goodbye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.